More on Pakistan tonight in our Think Tank segment. And here with us, our Channel News Asia's resident analyst tonight, Dr. Iftikhar Ahmed Chaudhry, Senior Research Fellow at the Institute of South, uh, South Asian Studies. And Associate Research Fellow Saeed Adnan Ali Shah Bukhari from S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies. And good evening, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, so, Dr. If, uh, Chaudhry, let me start with you. Prime Minister Gilani, he has said that he will accept the outcome of the court's uh, move to indict him on charges of contempt. So what is the likelihood of him being jailed? Well, uh uh, as a matter of fact, there is no option but to accept the verdict of the court, of course. But uh, uh, Prime Minister Gilani deserves some plaudits for, for his courage, uh, for having stood up to the, to the army. Uh, he's done that. Uh, his problem is, of course, he, has to, uh, he cannot show himself to be fickle to his president as well, which has again earned him the wrath of the, of the court. So should, as a result of uh, the judgment, should that lead to his political demise, he will make that demise look like a martyrdom. Mm. That's the best, of a be uh, good bar best bargain for him. Right. All right, see, it, it, well, it looks like the court, uh, the Supreme Court at least, and the military are ganging up on the uh, Zardari administration. Oh, what do you think could be the motive behind this? Well, this is not with regard to scuttling democracy, but with regard to implementation of court orders. Uh, the court has taken some decisions with regard to corruption cases, with regard to, for example, National Reconciliation Ordinance, and the government has been uh, dragging its feet behind in terms of implementation that. Mm -hmm. This entire debate is with regard to that, and I don't think uh, other institutions like judiciary and military are trying to scuttle the government or trying to become a catalyst in their fall. All right, um, Dr. Chari here. You know, this development, it comes really so soon after reports that President Musharraf saying that, you know, he will um, delay his return to Pakistan. Honestly, how should we view, um, you know, everything that's happening right now? Well, uh, the decision to delay uh, redounds to the benefit of all, really. Uh, he, his return would be unwelcome, uh, not just uh, uh, to, to the government, who, which has said that they would arrest him, also to someone that he is, uh, uh, is said to support, uh, uh, the rising star uh, Imran Khan. Uh, any. Uh, outward or open show of support would be like a kiss of death uh, uh, for Imran Khan. Uh, as well as to the military, his, his former colleagues in the military, mm -hmm. who are increasingly sensitive to public sentiments in the country. Just as there is a time to live and a time to die, for exiles there is a time to return home. And uh, for President Basharaf, the time has not yet come, I think. Right, so he's timing his return then? Yes. Right. Say so, yeah, the uh, the significance of the Zardari administration to with the military and the the ISI, the intelligence service, to to Pakistan's current uh, state of affairs. There are many issues. Uh, if you look into the main issue, which is a militancy, I think there is a unanimity of views with regard to the entire spectrum of the of, of the of the of the political sphere. If you look into all the political parties, the people of Pakistan and every institution are unanimous that the war against terrorism should proceed. So they have unanimity on that. With regard to domestic issues, for example, fighting corruption or fighting other uh, social issues or economic issues. Uh, there has been pressure on the incumbent government by Zardari to solve those problems, which have, he has not been able to do so. All right, speaking of unity in fighting terrorism, can Pakistan at this point actually handle the problem of terrorism in the country? Well, they have been uh, very much successful. If you, look into, if you look into the record of 2011, the last year, terrorism incidents have gone down considerably. Pakistan has conducted multiple and simultaneous military operations that have broken the back of the terrorist, and that's why uh, you see there is, a, there, there is a decline in terrorist incidents in Pakistan. In the rest of Pakistan, they have been conducting a lot of law enforcement actions. But the main core of the problem remains Afghanistan, where, which remains instable, where Taliban have been able to uh, de de develop sanctuaries over there. And therefore, the war that has been uh, ex being executed by Pakistan remains unfinished. Mm. All right. Well, it seems like in Pakistan, the, the military is starting to undermine the government, the government trying to undermine the intelligence service. But what about this threat of a coup? How possible is this, Dr. Chudri? Well, in a traditional uh, uh, sense, uh, the uh, coup in a traditional sense is very unlikely. 
uh, and in any case, uh, uh, unnecessary perhaps, because come what may, the military is going to uh, call the shots in matters, matters that are critical to its, uh, to its interests. Uh, Pakistan doesn't need a coup, no. But what Pakistan needs is strong and uh, honest leadership in a democratic milieu uh, uh, that is able to provide uh, the kind of guidance to the people of, uh, of Pakistan. The problems are many, as you, as you hear, and, and some of them are very daunting. But the people of Pakistan, I think, can, can take solace from the reality that uh, the kite rises against the wind. All right, well, last question, um, Saad. Do you think there's a possibility of a uh, leadership vacuum at all, then? No, I do not think there is any such possibility because uh, we have a lot of political parties, a lot of political actors, a very thriving political culture in Pakistan. So if the incumbent government falls, and anyways, it has to step down this year because we are anticipating elections. The government is about to finish its five years term, basically. So there are political leaders, like as you mentioned, Imran Khan, or for example, Nawaz Sharif of Muslim League. There are a lot of such leaders which are able to fill that vacuum and lead the country on a democratic course. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us on this special Think Tank segment on Channel News Asia. And we've been speaking with Dr. Iftika Ahmad Chowdhury from the Institute of South Asian Studies. And of course, Mr. Sayyad Adnan Ali Shah Bukhari from the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies here in the studio.